Hello everyone, it's Jabari here. When we think of constitutions of nation states, we typically have a very modern and standardized idea of what it entails. A dusty old piece of paper rolled up behind a glass case, discolored with a yellow tinge after being written down by some old white men centuries ago. It typically outlines a basic set of rights, privileges, and laws of all people who live within its borders. We also usually look at the English Magna Carta as one of the most early or impressive forms of constitutions that history has to offer. However, a lesser known fact is that the Mali Empire had its own constitution called the Manden Charter or the Khan Fuga, created just two decades later, making it one of the world's oldest known official constitutions. But that's a topic that deserves a video in its own right though. And even lesser known still is that even those societies in Africa that lacked writing systems and passed down the traditions and customs orally had their own constitutions complete with rights, privileges, and laws with courthouses, judges, and trials maintained specifically for that purpose. And we will be talking about one of those today. In 1701, the Ashanti Empire was the first Akan states to unify the Twi-speaking peoples under one ruler, and as such, they resolved to lay out a constitution that would be followed by all of its diverse clans that had previously had their own laws and ways of life. This initiative was to prevent any previous clan rivalry or culture shock from manifesting between these newly united peoples. The constitution was well thought out and planned by incorporating various elements of Akan groups based on customs and traditions that had existed there for generations. The result was a state constitution known today as the 77 Laws of Anoche Ocumpo. Here are but 27 of those laws. The Ashantehene stool should not be duplicated. Any king who consults an oracle without focusing on the Twediapon Nana Nyankompon is unfit to rule. He will be destooled. The Ashantehene can create and degrade posts. He is the final arbiter in disputes, but can only make laws in consultation with his counselors, whose posts are hereditary. The Abrepon, the great council of kings, is the government. The king of kings cannot create or modify a law without their consent. He must comply with their majority decisions. Duaben, which is like a twin sister to Kwaman, will have her king and the Mamponhene serve as heads of the government. Mamponhene is in a unique position as he belongs to the only neutral clan, Retuo. The linguists will speak at government meetings. The Ocheyame, chief linguist, wields extraordinary power. His duty is to state both sides of cases and to verbalize verdicts. He is the mouthpiece of the king and serves also as counselor, crown protector, council of defense, and judge. Those in authority will be properly addressed as a matter of protocol. A king who conspires or rebels against the king will lose his life. A king who is found to have embezzled the wealth of his people will immediately refund what he took and be unseated from his stool. Unless there is a reasonable justification that should warrant a fine, refusal to attend the king's call will result in capital punishment or destoolment. A king will be unseated from his stool if he assaults the king's sword bearer. A king who wrongs his subjects must apologize to the person or people or pay compensation according to the degree of damage. A priest who wrongly predicts events will lose his right to priesthood. Even if a man claims to have accidentally committed incest under the influence of alcohol or some other intoxicant, he will still be killed. There should be no sex between a parent and child or between a brother and a sister. A girl who engages in premarital sex should be purified. She is not to be killed. Sex in the forest or bushes is forbidden. 
A pregnant woman who has been sentenced to death will be allowed to live till she delivers her child. A young woman should inform her parents when she begins to menstruate. A deaf, blind, dumb, or leprous person should not be killed. Don't kill an insane person either. He or she does not know what he is doing. Killing except in war is an abomination. Only those proven guilty of a capital offense can be killed, and only the king and his executioners are permitted to kill. Drunkenness should be discouraged. A vessel containing alcohol should not fall or break in the streets. Eggs should not be broken in the streets. The township will be reserved for housing, and the outer limits will be reserved for farming. Casual evening strolls will not be encouraged. Dress codes according to one's status in society will be enforced. The architectural design of a house should conform with the owner's social status. Unauthorized embellishments will not be permitted. It is a capital offense in our new nation for anyone to place any undue emphasis on where their foreparents belonged before they joined the Union. Of course, these laws aren't verbatim as they were preserved orally, and it's also important to note that at this time in history, laws were enforced for both practical reasons as well as spiritual reasons. I tried without success to find a complete list of all 77 of Anoche Okonfo's laws but the sources for what I did find will be available via my website. Another quick note I'd like to add is that the Ashanti court was known to have retained a core of Muslim scribes to record and manage administrative information, with this set of 77 laws potentially being among the contents of those records. Despite the use of Muslim scribes, Ashanti people, religion, and ways of life still retained all of the power and control over the empire. Unfortunately, these documents would have probably been among the many books found within the royal palace before they were burned by the British. Written or not though, the Ashanti government took extra care to enforce the laws, rights, and privileges of its people, and was even known to have an efficient police force, which they referred to as Amradofo, which roughly translates to those responsible for maintaining the law. This system was well ahead of its time in this part of history, as most of the world's states lacked any dedicated law enforcement. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video and don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you want more videos like these. For sources, check out my website, linked below. If you'd like to support future projects, you can do so there as well, or by clicking the join button below, or by becoming a patron. I hope you all enjoyed the video, thanks for watching as usual, and always remember, we don't come from nothing.